So today I'm going to give my review of the X52. Uh, this is just the standard X52 from Saytech. Uh, you may have noticed I put some intro music to this video and I think the theme is apt. It's uh, Burning Bridges by the Mike Curb Congregation, uh, which was uh, uh, from the movie Kelly's Heroes. Um, you know, the lyrics of that song in particular are, are very fitting because as friends of mine who have owned this joystick before, you know, tried to warn me that Hey, uh, it is what it is. It's the lowest end of the uh, price spectrum when it comes to HOTASs, with the exception of the T-Flight X HOTAS, which, uh, in another video I'm doing, I, I will basically say that it's on par with really a joystick as opposed to a real HOTAS system, because it is a PlayStation 3 controller versus... And anyway, I'll save that for that video. Today we're talking about the X52. Now, I do have the CH next to it um, because of another video I'm going to do comparing the two of them, so I'm going to try not to do a lot of comparisons there um, in this video and stick strictly to the X52. But the problem that uh, Saytech has is, one, is quality control. Uh, the number of people who have had to RMA X52s and even X52 Pros um, is fairly high. It's not uncommon to hear people had to return two or three sticks before they got one that worked. And this seems to be a systemic problem um, amongst Saytech gear in general, um, even before they were acquired by Mad Cats in 2009. Um, those of you who are familiar with Mad Cats' quality of products uh, when it comes to uh, replacement Xbox controllers and things like that, um, even dating back to N64 days, probably know what I'm talking about when it comes to uh, quality control issues. So, with that being said, uh, let's actually get into the functionality uh, behind the stick and the throttle. Uh, and overall there, um, general functionality, it isn't bad. I found it comparable to, say, a, a, a number button-wise, a, a CH combat stick uh, at a much, well, uh, arguably lower price. But you have these three um, toggle switches here, which are very handy, especially in flight sims, because you can toggle gear, flaps, and air brake. Uh, up and down. That's actually kind of neat. Nice place to actually move um, your your landing gear control and stuff like that without actually having to sacrifice combat controls um, on the throttle and stick. Um, you have three, four um, single action buttons. There's a button here. Uh, typically I will use that for countermeasures and then uh, missiles uh, it doesn't have a pickle switch at the thumb rest. Um, however, be aware that eventually this will lose its kind of ability to stay up. And mine broke off my X45. Uh, likely this is to... I'll either break it off or will get broken off at some point. So keep that in mind. It's kind of a neat, oh, you know, immersive element. Uh, as far as practicality goes, eh. Uh, you do have two eight-way hat switches, uh, which is nice, and then you have a mode selector, so you can instantly uh, change the mapping of all of these buttons um, in, in one of three modes, so you can triple the number of configurations you have. So you could have, say, combat, mining, navigation, or however you want to do it. Um, the stick itself feels fairly solid. Now, it is a cheaper plastic than, say, what CH uses on theirs. Uh, CH uses ABS. This is something cheaper. But they've put this rubberized coating on where your hand rests on both this and the throttle, this gray area. And it basically masks uh, the feel of it being cheap plastic, um, cheaper, thinner plastic. It Because of that rubberized coating, it feels uh, heavier than it really, um, really is in reality. A couple other things on the stick. You have a pinky switch. Now, I had issues reaching this button on the X45. It was a taller stick. This stick is a little bit shorter. And also, you can uh, kind of pull this out and adjust how high this sets. Uh, so if you even have a smaller hand or want it more up here, you can maneuver that. So they really fixed that problem. Another interesting and nice feature about the stick is it has a dual stage trigger. Stage one, stage two. So you can use this for cannon or machine guns, fire everything. Typically you do machine guns, cannon, fire both. 
Um, a couple things to keep uh, keep in mind there. Now, where the stick really breaks down is when it comes to accuracy and precision. It has a lot of slop. Now, it does have pitch, yaw, or a pitch roll, and yaw. It can simulate rotor pedals without having to have it. And let's say you do have rotor pedals, don't want to use yaw. You can just pull out this little tab down here, and it's a stop. Now, it still moves a little bit, but it won't register on screen. Uh, it has a fairly high default dead zone. Um, I didn't tweak with that uh, those settings that much whenever I was playing with it. Uh, I just wanted to get an idea for it. But in terms of accuracy and precision, out of the box, it doesn't seem to be any more precise or accurate than this $35 Logitech Extreme 3D Pro. Um, you know, it's nowhere near the precision of a T16000M or a CH uh, fighter stick um, uh, for comparison. Uh, so I was a little bit disappointed in that. Um, so with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and move this kind of out of the way and then bring the throttle. Now, as issues I might have with the stick, I really kind of do like the throttle. It, you can adjust the tension on the throttle. You can't do that on the stick without changing up the spring. Um, it's a rolling action, uh, which a lot of people like. Uh, I kind of indifferent. It feels very natural in the hand, uh, and whenever you feel and put your hand on there, it rests very naturally, um, which is kind of nice. Now, I'm not sure. I think you're supposed to operate it like here, but arguably, you'd almost need to manipulate um, this ha uh, hat on the back with your middle finger as opposed to your index. Um, it has detents at 75%, so... In a flight sim, what you would do, this would be 100% throttle, and then beyond that would be afterburn. Um, on the way down, there's a 25% detent. This would be zero thrust, reverse thrust. That's nice. What's particularly nice is unlike the T-Flight X that has a 50% detent, you don't feel uh, the 25 on the way up. You don't feel the 75 on the way down. So that is very nice how they have that um, worked out. It also features this multi-function display, and it's not hooked into the computer right now. But what I like about this display is it will tell you what mode you're in very clearly. It will tell you what profile you currently have loaded. Um, so if you have different profiles for different games, you know you're not running your Diaspora pro, uh, profile in X3 Terran Conflict, for instance. Or your Terran Conflict profile in Star Citizen. Um, you know, assuming eventually there will be profiles for that and everything. So those are some things I like. Another thing I really like about it is you can set up to three time zones on the uh, throttle. So let's say you're part of an international organization and you have all of your operations set to UTC. No matter what time is on your computer, you can have it set to basically ratio of time and um, have it set to Zulu. So you know if an uh, operation is going to take place at 2000 hour, uh, yeah, 20 hours Zulu, uh, you can look on there and say, oh, well, it's, it's 20 hundred hours. It's... Um, two o'clock in the afternoon here, or whatever uh, your local time is. And then you can set up to two more of those time zones. So you can see Zulu, uh, maybe your local time zone, and maybe a time zone one of your friends are in. Um, that's very nice. It also features a chronometer. Um, it's not accurate to milliseconds, just to the second, but let's say you're timing various maneuvers. You can click that and then see how long it takes to execute or how long it takes to fly from point A to point B, and you have an actual time without having to do a stopwatch or have another app or something standing by. Uh, those are all features that I really do like about that multifunction display. Uh, however, the rest of the functionality of the throttle, especially if you compare it to what's sitting next to it, uh, it's just not quite as functional. You only have three buttons. You have a button here, you have a button there, and then you have a button on top here. You have these two radial dials, which technically are trim knobs. Uh, you'd use these to trim out your aircraft in, an, in a flight simulator. Uh, I've seen in Star Citizen, um, the devs with similar style um, switches or uh, rotary dials on the X-55 say, oh, well, maybe you could use it for missile and gun selection. I guess those are optional. Now, you have this little nubbin. Uh, this is like the nubbins from the um, keyboards of an IBM ThinkPad back in the late 1990s, uh, where you used to use them to control the mouse, and this is exactly what it is. This would control an on-screen mouse. In fact, I was just playing around in Windows one day, and there was my mouse 
cursor going across the screen. So it recognizes this as a mouse. Um, this is a mouse click, in particular uh, left click. And it has this on the back scroll wheel. So it's an infinite scroll and you can basically simulate all features of a modern mouse um, with the throttle, which makes it kind of nice, but I don't feel that it has the accuracy to really be able to map your thrusters for um, strafing uh, to the stick. Nowhere near the accuracy, say, of the CH um, option. So, it also has this slider, which in X3 Terran Conflict, it recognized as being the throttle instead of the entire unit. Uh, and I'm not exactly sure how to solve that. I guess you could use this for zoom in, zoom out, uh, if you weren't using a track IR or Oculus or something like that. And then it has this eight-way hat right here, which I find difficult to manipulate from this perspective. It's very, very different to our, or very, very difficult to articulate, say, if I just went up as opposed to up and right or up and left. In the heat of the moment, I find myself not articulating this correctly, so I either have to leave these virtually unmapped or mapped to the same as just up. Um, the CH, for instance, has a uh, similar hat switch, but it's only a four-way, and I find that much easier and much more precise to manipulate with um, my forefinger on my left hand. So that's the review of the X52 uh, HOTAS system. Now, I will say that there's the X52 Pro, which is about $50 more, um, and the X52 Pro is the same functionality. It does have an additional Hall effect sensor. It's noted as being more accurate out of the box. You can improve the accuracy of the X52 if you look up the X52 magnet mod. Uh, you will void your warranty doing so, however. Uh, so keep that in mind. But my point is, if they, if they put a little bit more precision into uh, the design of it, and let's face it, this design is not new. If they would come out with a, a an updated revision over the past five, six years, seven years, whatever it's been, um, they could have certainly have fixed that known issue of moving the, the magnet in just a little bit more uh, on, on uh, later production runs, and they haven't. Um, so it, it's one of those things I'm just like, eh, maybe that's impetus for trying to drive people to dry, uh, buy the, a slightly more expensive X52 Pro. Uh, I don't know. But those are just some things to, to, to keep in mind. It's not a bad host house, uh, not at the $120 price mark, certainly not at a $60 price mark if you get it off eBay like I did. Um, but it is what it is. Just don't expect it to have the quality of, say, the, the set setting next to it. Um, it's not going to be there. I think it's perfectly acceptable to use in uh, Star Citizen or other flight sim games. Um, that's not War Thunder. Um, I had no problems using it in uh, BMS, Falcon BMS. So that's kind of my review of the X52 uh, in a nutshell. Um, thank you for watching and see you in the verse.